Am I the asshole for publicly calling out my sister and her new husband for lying about their wedding being child-free? My stepdaughter, 15 Jane, has a burn scar around her neck and covers one side of her face. It was the result of an accident that took place four years ago, and yes, she's already gotten tons of insensitive comments, but to me and her dad, she's still the most beautiful soul. My family's also been supportive and loving towards Jane. My sister and her now husband got married days ago. They told me and my husband that they decided the wedding will be child-free, meaning that Jane couldn't come. They asked if that was okay, and we said absolutely, and that we respect the rules. I arranged for Jane to stay with a friend, but she did want to attend the wedding. My husband and I got to the venue, and the first thing we noticed was kids. Am I the asshole for telling my husband I won't be calling him when I go into labor? Well, he called me this afternoon to tell me he wasn't coming home after work and would probably be having drinks tonight with his friends, and then proceeds to tell me that he fully intends to go to his buddy's party next weekend as well. I didn't get upset and just said fine. Have a good time. Before he hung up, he said if I needed him to call. My response was no, I wouldn't be calling. If I went into labor, I'd be calling someone else. And now he's mad at me saying that I'm being a child. But I see it as if he's drinking this close to my due date and planning on drinking next weekend whether the baby has came or not, he clearly doesn't care to be there. It's not like he could take me if he was drunk as a skunk. Am I unreasonable? Am I the asshole for telling my infertile sister I hope she never has a child? She started acting very weird and almost like she wanted me to miscarry. She would make jokes like, imagine if you miscarried or how sad would you be if you miscarried? I actually started fearing for me and my baby's safety when I found out she was using again. She would have random tantrums about the littlest things. One day I got really dizzy and ended up in the ER. Tests were ran and it was confirmed that she was feeding me drugs in hopes that my baby would pass. When I confronted her, she broke down and admitted to everything and said I was selfish for having babies. I said I hoped that she would never succeed in having a kid and that I'm glad she's infertile in front of the whole hospital floor. This is the story of the disappearance of Margaret Ellen Fox, and yes, the phone call at the end of the story is real. This is a picture of Margaret, and she had just graduated the 8th grade, and she decided that she wanted to get some babysitting gigs. This all takes place in the summer of 1974, and Margaret lived in Burlington, New Jersey. Margaret put out her phone number looking for these babysitting gigs, and on June 19th, this guy by the name of John Marshall called her, asking for her to babysit his 5-year-old son. The job was in Mount Holly, New Jersey, and Margaret's parents were kind of weird about it because she was only in 8th grade and she'd be traveling to a different city. But she gave them John Marshall's phone number so they were okay with it. John had some babysitting stuff set up for her on a weekend, but he postponed it three times. Eventually, he called her again and said this time it was for real and he would pick her up in a red Volkswagen. Margaret told her parents that she would call right when she got there, but no call. A few hours went by and still no call. And she was supposed to be home at 2.30, but then she didn't show up. And then hours went by and she still didn't show up. Part two coming now. Have you ever been scared that some random person could be living in your attic or your basement and you don't know about it? Well, story time. This man in Seattle arrives to his house and he notices some lights are on that would normally be off. He gets inside, goes to the bathroom on the second floor, and notices that the screen that goes in the window above the bathtub had fallen into the bathtub. He didn't really think anything of it until the next morning when he was woken up by noises right above him in the attic. It sounded like someone was rummaging through things. And then later, he looks down his hallway and sees the office door shut with the light on. So he goes up to the door and knocks on it, and a woman replies from the other side, Jimmy, Jimmy, is that you? And he's like, no, who's Jimmy? Why are you in my house? He called 911 immediately, and the woman opened the door and was face to face with him. And she said, this is my house. I've been living here for three days. Jimmy said I could stay here. He tried to keep her in the house until the police arrived, but she escaped by throwing an escape ladder outside the window. It took 18 minutes for the police to arrive, and she had dark hair, wore sweatpants, and a track jacket. Track it. And he changed his locks. Has anybody ever told you the terrifying true story of Snow White? I'm sure by now we all know the Disney version, but the Brothers Grimm version, which came before the Disney version, is actually much darker. In this version, the evil queen orders the huntsman to take Snow White into the woods, kill her, and bring back her liver and lungs for the queen to eat. Which is obviously very disturbing, but there's actually more to the story. Later in the story, the prince and Snow White are getting married, and they invite all the royalty in the land. The evil queen shows up, unknowing it was her stepdaughter's wedding. When she arrives, she's forced to step into burning hot iron shoes brought from the fireplace. And then she has to dance until she dies. And that's her punishment for trying to go after Snow White. I don't really feel bad for her, but gosh, I mean, this version is terrifying. Remember, your Amazon Alexa is always listening. In 2018, a girl named Alexa came home to her apartment to find her creepy stalker landlord in her kitchen. 
She screams and threatens to call the cops, and he just smiles and says, I was just checking in on you, and leaves. Feeling totally sketched out, she spends the next few hours down the hall in her friend's apartment before finally going back to her room to go to bed. That night, she woke up to her Amazon Alexa responding to someone in the room. It said, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Did you say, I'm watching you? The girl instantly turns on her lights and looks around, but no one's there. So she unplugs Alexa and is about to go back to sleep when she hears what sounds like a man grunting in her closet. As she's staring at her closet, her Alexa turns back on. I have a movie idea. Hear me out. So there's this young delivery truck driver, and every day he stops at the same house because there's a young woman who makes him a sandwich and gives him a water. So kind. They like each other, but they don't know it yet. Well, one day he shows up at her house at the usual time, but something is off. For the first time in months, she's not waiting outside for him. He gets out of his truck and goes to knock on the door, but the door is cracked open. Worried and confused, he's about to call out her name when somebody taps him on the shoulder. It was her. She says, I'm sorry, I had a super busy day, and I'll see you tomorrow, and basically rushes back into her house. Okay. So he gets back in his truck and drives off. A few streets down, he has to slam on the brake. That same woman, covered in bruises and crying, is standing in the middle of the road trying to get him to stop. He runs out and says, what happened? I just saw you. This is what she said. That wasn't me. That was my twin sister. She thinks she got rid of me. She wants to take my life. Acting normal, he goes back to the house. An identical woman opens the door. He asks, do you have a twin? And she says, I do, but she wants my life. She's crazy. You can't trust her. So which one is the woman that he's known for months? Who should he believe? Does he fall in love with the wrong one? I come from a family that is very expressive and confrontational when emotional, and my husband James comes from quite the opposite. Many of our issues ended up in a similar pattern. I would communicate about every little thing instead of sweeping it under a rug, and he would shut down instead of responding or addressing things. When we moved in together, we had a conversation about how we were taught to work out our problems, and that's when we discovered the root of our issues. My style was very solution-focused and immediate, which to him seemed aggressive, and he needed time to back away and think, which made me feel like he was giving up. So amongst many different ways that we fought, this is one solution which worked for us. Where if I was upset about something and we were not coming to an agreement, I would take some time to go to the other room and text him my thoughts. That way he could absorb what I was trying to relate to him without being triggered by the tone of my voice. When he was ready, he'd step back into the room to talk to me about it because I like face-to-face -face conversations better. And just like that, our fights went from a few hours to a few minutes. If you're alone right now, don't watch this video. In the winter of 2018, a man who was living alone in the mountains wakes up to find a red ball sitting on his front yard. He assumed the only neighbor he had must have kids, and so he kicks the ball over the fence, goes inside, doesn't think anything of it. That night, he wakes up to the sound of kids laughing outside of his window. He goes outside and checks the That night he wakes up again to the sound of kids on his property, and when he looks outside, there's no kids, but that red ball is back on his property. Panicked, he runs downstairs to make sure the one he brought in is still inside, and it's gone. He checked every window and door, and everything was still locked. It didn't make any sense. He decides to look out the window one more time, and off in the distance is some weird stiff figure watching him.